everyone, thank you so much for joining us for another session on Meeting Mondays. Today's topic is breakout rooms in Teams meetings. Our speaker today is Donald Danaeus. Don, you have the floor. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Good day, everybody. And so if Nick, you can turn to the next uh, slide quick, uh, we'll just kind of talk through what we're going to talk about today, specifically about breakout rooms. And this is something that um, we added to Teams probably, I think it was like, uh, oh my gosh, it's been like December 2020, I think we started this and went down there. And it really helps to bring that engagement to your attendees. Um, even more so, right? So really taking that that group that you have and then breaking it down so that you have this ability to be able to have them interact a little bit more, even have the ability to have a, a manager or a presenter to be able to be in that to be able to kind of facilitate if that's the case. So what we're going to be looking through is we're going to be talking about, you know, how do we set this up, get it in there, some options we have for maybe a pre-meeting uh, creating the breakout rooms versus during the meetings uh, breakout rooms. How do you get them uh, attendees in there and how do you manage it? How do you open them up? How do you close it? How do you throw uh, announcements out there? And then what is that end user experience? So one of the things that we're doing is you're going to be seeing this and I want to thank my colleagues, um, Walt and Nick. They're going to be popping into personas in um, for this demo as well and interacting and being a part of this. So we're going to be doing this all um, in a demo environment that we have set up for uh, this scenario. So let me actually go and take over and start sharing my desktop. All right. Make sure everybody can see me. Get this out of the way. All right. So. <clears throat> A couple things before we really get started. I want to kind of give you up to date as far as the feature sets that we're talking about. So I kind of hinted at that as far as some of the, the precursor stuff here. You know, December 2020, we brought this out. Um, in August of 2021, we augmented that capability through adding things like breakout timer and as well as things like room retention. So if you have, um, say, for instance, you have a recurring meeting that has breakout rooms in there, those breakout rooms will continue as long as you have that recurring meeting going and the same setup if you have the same attendees. So if I want to do this continually over the next, maybe next two, three weeks, I don't have to redo those breakout rooms after the fact. In October of last year, we actually added something called a breakout room manager, and I'll kind of be talking about that here. So I think it's important, especially if you don't want to be the only one that's managing the users inside the meeting during that meeting. And then we also added the ability to do pre-meeting um, uh, breakout room creation. And that's what, then again, I'm going to show that as we kind of talk through things. Um, another feature I want to talk about, it's on the roadmap, and I do know that we have a lot of customers that are asking, well, what about being able to take a Microsoft Teams room, a conference room, and bring it into a breakout room? Yeah, that feature is coming out here. Um, in the near future, I didn't get an actual date on that, potentially June, July, um, and it's going to be focusing on in Microsoft Teams rooms on the Android side with the Windows ones coming in the near future. So a couple of things when we're looking at breakout rooms, we do have some limitations that we do have to kind of think about. One of the th limitations is, is that you have a maximum of 300 people on, into a meeting that will allow you to be able to do breakout rooms. So if you have a meeting that has more than 300 breakout rooms automatically is disabled, you cannot do that. So right now that's a hard limit. So keep that one in mind. The other part that you have to keep in mind too is the organizer is the only one who can actually create breakout rooms, right? So if I, in this case, Megan Bowen, in this particular scenario here, I go into and I have an activity going here on Wednesday. If I go in here, I will see breakout rooms as an option on this particular scenario. But if I were to go into, let's just say Patty for a second, and I go to that same meeting, on the 18th, you'll notice that I do not have an act, the ability to be able to do anything from a breakout room. Again, the reason why is because in this case, Megan was the one who set up this meeting and then has that ability to be able to create the breakout room in this scenario. So 
that organizers are very important in this business issue. All right, any questions so far, Nick? Yeah, two. Um, one, uh, I did a little bit of research and I want to check with you before I give the answer. One is um, any updates on timeline on PSTN support for breakout rooms. And so to, um, to, get, ooh, to give context, that is if I dial yeah. into the meeting over the public telephone network and or if I join the meeting with a Teams room device or Teams phone. Right this second, the only way you can get placed into a breakout room is if you're on a Teams client. Correct. And I, I, so you briefly talked about um, what's yep. coming this summer with rooms on Android. Yeah, that's not on the list right now. And I have, um, yeah, I, I've not seen anything for Joel for exactly. PSTN. Dial. Exactly. So, okay, I want to make sure you had. The second one was, um, this is getting to calendar and like object stored in Exchange Online a little bit. Lacey asked yep. for suggestions on scheduling breakout rooms from a meeting scheduled in Outlook versus an individual calendar. And my general advice is if you're doing a Teams meeting, don't, sorry, I left out an important word there, Don, don't schedule it from the shared Outlook calendar. Instead, schedule right. it from a system account or a user's calendar. And the yeah. reason is Teams stores all the metadata for a meeting object in your Exchange Online mailbox. Yeah. Uh, exactly. A shared Outlook calendar doesn't have all that. Um, and so I've, I've seen instances where people, you can like create the meeting, but then like the recording doesn't work. You can't add mm -hmm. apps, breakout rooms, because it does, the Teams doesn't know where to put the stuff that it's you're adding. It's about access. Yeah. Yeah. Ex so that, that absolutely. All that correctly? Yeah. So in that use case, let's say I'm an exec admin for an organization. I have to like schedule the main tent meeting using my calendar, even if we have one set up called, you know, Contoso All Hands or something. Um, yeah. And that's that's section we are working on, but I don't have any kind of a timeline on that. So I'd schedule it for mine if I'm doing a meeting that a lot of people are going to be joining. Exactly. Yeah, Those then I see somewhere the else in there. Uh, so Raj was asking, can the power oh, uh, that the breakout room be delegated? So there is <clears throat> it, it's kind of a catch kind of scenario. So you have, <clears throat> excuse me, in this case, so Megan set up this meeting. Megan has the ability to go into the breakout room. And from here, they can set up a breakout room. That for now but they can set up a breakout room manager. This is that, that feature that came up uh, fall last year. Now, the caveat of this is that the person that is a manager needs to be a presenter, right? So if you take a look at here, if you don't see a presenter in this, so if I you know, check the slider, and you don't see a presenter in there, you need to go to meeting options and add them as a presenter. So if you're not familiar with that capability, if you take a look at meeting options, after you create a meeting, meeting options comes in. This is actually fortuitous because of something I wanted to kind of talk about anyway. So if you notice in meeting options, and if I click or go a little bit, zoom in here, it's this section right here. So if I start with this, it's usually set to everyone. I will go ahead and change it, right? So I want to say specific people. And then it takes those people that are in that meeting and saying, oh, hey, in this case, I want Patty to end up being that, that, that breakout room manager, right? So from there, once I set that and save it, then she has this ability. So when I'm in a meeting, and here's the caveat to this, the breakout room has to be created ahead of time, right? So it has to be enabled, so to speak, right? So until breakout room manager can get access to that. So what I would have to do is I'd have to go in and set up that breakout room. And maybe that's going to be in this one here, where I'm going to go through and say breakout rooms, and then I'll create them. And then, you know, in this case, Patty would be able to manage those settings or manage users or add those in there. So we'd have to coordinate a little bit with it. So it's not a complete takeover at that point. This is consistent with other things in the team's meeting experience. Um, so if Don wanted to add an app to this meeting, like let's say he wanted to add the managed Q&A app we talked about last week. Um, okay. I cannot, I am not an organizer of this meeting, but I am a presenter. And once Don adds it, then I would be able to have access to it. So we kind of keep those highest level privileges to like inject objects into the meeting to the organizer. Once they're there, presenters usually can get to them, in this case, the breakout yeah. rooms. But it is something to set up in advance. Agreed. 
And then to kind of go along with that, so John asks, will COPE organizers be able to manipulate the breakout rooms? Right now, no, they're not going to be able to do anything with that um, because they would still have to be a breakout room manager to be able to actually do anything from that. And if you're familiar with the whole co-organizer thing, it's really nothing pre-meeting, it's during meeting that you would have access to be able to do meeting controls and be able to disable and enable video and audio and, and remove somebody. You would have those capabilities. So, all right, so let's take a look at this and deep dive. And I know there's more questions, but I, I, I wanna get, jump into a little bit more here. So say for instance, I have this meeting that's happening on Wednesday and I'm the organizer. I already went into breakout rooms, and one of the things I was able to do is I got a couple of things, right? This is pre-meeting. So I can go into the settings, and the settings are over here on the right-hand side. Right, and you also notice there's all those some icons here. If I want to already, if I have meetings, uh, breakout rooms already set up, then the other icons are going to take effect at this point, but right now I don't. So if I go in here and I will see, and I showed you this before, but I want you to notice outside of that, you have the ability to set a time limit, right? So you can say how many hours, how many minutes you want to have this meeting happen. The other thing you can do is automatically move people into these rooms. And that means as soon as I were to open the rooms, breakout rooms in this particular meeting, then they will automatically fly into those rooms that I had set up. You could do the opposite, which is manually, and you'd have to actually take a bunch of people in the uh, in the UI and be able to then move them into that room, and that's manual. Most organizations that have used this use it as an automatic. Then the other option is let people return to the main meeting. Again, that's up to you, the, the user flow, how you want that to happen, so you can check that. And as soon as you close, everybody else goes back to the main meeting. Um, or you can let them also manually move back to the main meeting. So you can decide, do you want to have complete control as the, as the um, moderator for this particular event, or do you want them to be able to get out and do it themselves? So once I have that set, it saves all those settings, and then I can go ahead and create the breakout rooms. Again, this is pre-meeting. So I add the breakout rooms. And I can decide how many I want to. I think it's up to 50 breakout rooms in a particular meeting that you can have. And then so you'll notice I have two breakout rooms. I can go in here and I can do things like edit settings for this breakout room or delete. One thing to keep in mind is whatever I have for settings in the meeting gets inherited inside the breakout room. So if I have disable uh, video, right? And so no camera in the meeting, all those settings will come down to the breakout room. All right, so if I want to edit the breakout room, notice I can edit the name of the breakout room if I want to. And that's pretty much all I have as far as the actual edit piece. If I want to be able to add people ahead of time, I can go and assign participants and I can say automatic or do I want to do manual? Right, so depending upon the type of meeting that you have, you can then choose. Right, so in this case, if I say manual, you'll see that I get a uh, uh, a screen that gives me the ability to move these people into certain locations, right? If I want to, I can bulk them. I want to move these guys into room one, and then I want to move these guys into room two. So very easy. I can then set up the rooms. I can assign them in this case. And you'll notice I have three participants here. I have three participants here. If I want to uh, change that, I just go back in here ahead of time. If I have to add somebody, I can do it again, all pre-meeting oriented. Okay. All right. <laughs> Nick, I'm seeing a bunch of questions. <laughs> Anything in particular yeah. that we I'm worry trying to about? do if I want to put this all in the chat or just talk through. I think I want to talk through it. Um, <laughs> So Frederick asked a good question, uh, but I'm going to expand on it just a little bit, is that sometimes when I have to reassign someone to an assigned breakout room, I've got to unassign them first and then assign them to the new room. So in this example, we do breakout rooms. People are, I've got a person in room three and I want to move them to room four. And it seems like I got to do two hops to do it. In expansion on that, sometimes people don't get assigned into breakout rooms. So I start off breakout rooms or do automatic assignment, and there's like one person still left in the main tent meeting, you know, what's going on there. In yeah. both those instances, it's a bug. 
um, what, yeah, what happened, yeah, under the covers, we instantiate a separate meeting ID and tag that participant persona with it. And then we send a join link down to that client, which then flips them into the new meeting. Something happened, probably a network latency thing, most likely um, during that join um, experience. And they remained in the main room. So you got to manually push them over. So yep. in a second, I'm going to drop in a link to our troubleshooting breakout rooms and teams meeting help article that walks through some steps. But in general, if it just doesn't happen, you've got to go like right click on their name and manually shuffle them around a little bit. Then um, Liz asked a question. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a really good one. Uh, well, yeah, it I'm is. Just two questions, but it is the mix and match question on random assignments versus manually assignments. And I have a sad answer. It's no. Um, so the, so <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. So the, the use case is um, I've got a 400 person, sorry, 100 person meeting, and I want to have 10 breakout rooms. I want to assign 10 moderators to be the presenters in those breakout rooms. Then everybody else I want to have assigned randomly when they come in. I can't do it that way. Um, so you either have to make everybody random or everybody manually assigned. So what I tend to do is do everybody random. And, and in this instance, this is you know, like when I don't know who's going to be in the meeting before it starts. Exactly. Um, yeah. Do everybody random and then quickly go through and reassign my 10 moderators. To Don's point, it's almost impossible to do this breakout room moderation stuff while you're moderating chat or presenting. So that's mm -hmm. why it's like this, this separate role. Yeah. Um, last thought, if you know in advance exactly who your attendance is going to be, then you could do this uh, prior to the meeting as Don showed us in the main Teams window. Uh, yeah. the, the problem with that is if you do this random assignment thing, and you have more people then join the meeting, they aren't randomly assigned because that's already happened. You have to manually place them too. Move them out the yep, absolutely. So, yeah, you, you got it, Liz. It's like one of these kind of uh, drenched in sweat things during the meeting. Um, so, yeah, when I've done this, I've like, hey, let's not start breakout rooms until minute 15 because I need 10 minutes while you're yeah. doing your shtick um, to get everybody where they're supposed to go before we click the open button. Yeah. And one of the things I've found with with groups that I've worked with is you will have different roles. Um, you'll have somebody who's kind of moderating the role. You have the presenters, obviously, you have those moderating chat, so to speak, and those types of things. You always want to have somebody that's going to focus on the breakout room. In those scenarios where you don't have that fixed set of people, you know are going to come. If you know it's going to be random, you know, that we may have 15 this time, and, and if we do this again in the future, maybe 25, then that's where they need to be focusing on getting that. So we did the breakout room for a session that we did last year. Um, and we ended up having to, at the first part of that session, manually go through this because we didn't know who was going to be around. In fact, we actually did one thing where we went a step farther and asked them what session do they want to be in because we had breakout sessions. And so we were able to understand who was in the breakout session, and then we had to manually move them into that room or set that up in that room to do it. So again, you have to kind of have some forethought on how do you want to approach this. All right. So let's jump to the meeting side of things, right? So we have a different meeting. You notice we have a bunch of people that are already in this meeting. Again, Patty is a, is a um, breakout room manager and Megan, who I am in this persona, is the organizer. So you'll notice again right here in this bar up here, rooms is sitting here, All right? So this is the icon that we're looking for. And again, the organizer, if I didn't do this pre-creation ahead of time, the organizer is the only one that can go in here and make this change. So if I go into rooms, you'll notice the it looks a little different, but it still has the same kind of information that we had before. So I have the number of rooms I can do, right? I can do up to 50. Um, two, I can automatically or I can manually, right? So if I choose to do manually, go ahead and create the rooms. And then you'll notice I'm going to get something very similar to what I had before. If I want to, I can go ahead and then choose, just like I did before, the ones that I want to move over. OK, so at the same time, I want to go back over into. Make sure I can see. Yes. All right. So we got the rooms. Um, I'm going to move over and assign. One in this case, just make it easy. Two. 
and we'll assign her to room one as well. All right. So you notice the panel pops over to the right hand side. And I have some options in here. OK, so I can assign participants. Uh, if I had any new ones, this is where I could see and then I can very quickly. So say, for instance, somebody popped in all of a sudden, then I can go ahead and assign them if I need to. If I go in here, you know, so I can see the settings for this particular room in this particular case, right? So I can go in here and assign presenters to manage rooms. So if I want to, I can go in here, and say Patty's going to be a presenter. Now, this is one level down. Right, so presenter, or I should say, from the organizer to be able to be that managed room advisor or manager in this case. I can set my time limits for this, and I can say I want to do it for 15 minutes. I can do it for one minute if I really want to do that. Automatically move, as I was mentioning before, you want that versus manually. And then you want to let them return, and this is a manual return. We'll actually put a button on there so that they can return back to the main. Um, main meeting that you had set up. Right? So you can set those things up ahead of time. Let that finish, All right? So you'll also see a couple other options if I want to be able to open all our rooms, if I want to be able to add a room, right? So if I wanted to add another room, I could go ahead and add another room to this and I can manage those rooms, right? So this room's empty if I needed to add a new one. I could then go ahead and delete this. You'll also see some other options, right? So I can open the individual room versus all the rooms and I can rename the individual rooms right? because you know we had that rename capability and the pre-meeting, we have that capability known too. All right, so now I have this capability. I'm already set up. I want you to notice something and I'm going to jump over to Patty for a second. So I'm going to move this one over and I'm going to bring Patty over. Okay. I want you to notice now Patty, I set her up as the room uh, breakout room moderator. She has that button now, right? So I can see that number one, Megan is managing the rooms at this point. If I wanted to take over, I would have to click on the manage rooms here from Patty's perspective. Then she would be able to do all those things that you saw that Megan would be able to do. Okay, so make sure again, that's as soon as it gets flipped over for Patty. Okay, so back over to Megan, being the owner again. We're going to open that room up. Okay, and so I'm going to. We're going to position a couple here so that you can kind of see this experience, right? So I'm going to open the room up. And what you're going to see is I'm going to bring over here. I have Deborah set up and we're going to watch what happens when we go ahead and do it. And it's not immediate. It's going to take a couple seconds and it's going to flip over. OK. All right. So we're going to open the room up. And of course, you're going to be tiling people and you notice that this thing says, OK, so the room has started. Um, you're automatically moving 10 seconds. It's automatic, right? And but it's giving you that banner, letting them know. And then all of a sudden. That meeting starts. All right, and you're not doing anything. Yes, we don't have a microphone. Um, but Diego and Alex are also in this particular meeting. If I go back into the main meeting, all right, so you notice Patty's still sitting here, Isaiah's sitting here, the rooms are in play, they're open, right? So they're have, these guys are having conversations at this point. So one of the things I can do as an organizer is I can go in here and then I have this ability to be able to join a particular room. If I want to be able to join that room, then I'm going to be able to have, literally I'm leaving this meeting and jumping over to that. The meeting still is going on. Right. So if I go back over here, I have this meeting going on here and this one's only set for for a minute. So it's going to be quick. Right. It gives me that 30 second countdown. Notice up in the left hand corner, there's an actual countdown that happens. Right. And then these guys are going to come back. And it's automatic. Right. Because I said only a minute. These guys are now done and this is going back to the original meeting. Okay. Again, that's set up an automatic. If I wanted to, there we go, Miriam, thank you. 
Um, if I wanted to do it, I can change the settings, right? So I could do longer if I want to, and we can maybe five minutes here, not or more than that. And we can try this again. Maybe it's session one versus session two. I'm going to open them up. And again, they're going to leave the meeting 10 seconds later. They're going to jump in. And what I want to try to show you is, is this experience as far as if you're done, right? If you, let me say you didn't do that time limit and you just chose to manually do that. This is the experience you will see in a couple things, right? I want to show you the announcement and then I want you to show you the closing of the rooms, so, so to speak, as well. Right, so they're back in. This is refreshing. Eventually we'll get the refresh. Still saying it's opening. Hoping the demo gods decide they're going to play well with us today. In the meantime, as that's uh, updating, the announcements allow us to be able to push an announcement out to everybody. All right, so I'm going to send this. What's going to happen on the other side, you will also see in chat, right? Chat will come up and it's an important message because Megan is the, the organizer, right? It'll come across as important because we set that up as an announcement here. Okay. And this one failed just because I was trying to do some new things. But I'm going to have right now, I'm going to show you the whole close piece, right? So again, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to close this particular meeting or these breakout rooms. And what you'll see is the room will close in 10 seconds, automatically move back to the main room. It's, auto, it's going to do that automatically. And I do want to show you the button right here. Oh, and I missed it. There is a return button. When you check that box, and that box happens to be the one that was showing you where it was, allow them to be able to return back to the main meeting. That's where they they can click on that return button, return themselves manually back to that meeting. Okay. All right, Nick, I know we're getting pretty close to the end here. Any big questions we want to hit before we wrap it up for the day? Yeah, uh, Walt, Walt answered it. I'm still researching one thing, which was, um, can I get into the breakout room and upload a file in advance of the meeting? And and I'm going to expand that a little bit to, you know, what can I do with a breakout room like I would do with a normal room prior to yep. the meeting? In the Teams UI, like in the main UI, like there's, it's really limited. You can't go in and edit the meeting like you can do and add tabs and stuff. Um, so like here, if you click the three dots to any one of those, you can go into settings and uh, your breakout room and rename it, but you can't do things like add stuff. Um, right. You can, as an organizer, join the host meeting, see your breakouts, then join those breakout rooms. And then I'm not sure if you can actually, I think it will also correct me. You, you're, you're saying I can then manipulate content in that breakout at that point in the meeting. Mm -hmm. and, and tell me if that the way I just phrased that didn't make any sense. Well, when it comes to things, go ahead, Walt. I was going to say, so in terms of uploading the file, correct, the documentation yeah. itself, that it would follow the same principle as being within the regular uh, regular teams meeting, but it's restricted only to the people that are in the meeting itself. Uh, same thing would go for the actual chat. And if you were to record the meeting, only the people, the group that's in that or has access to that breakout room itself will be able to access the recording chat and the documentation. Correct. Got it. But I think that, a, um, it's whether or not you could do that in advance is what I'm stuck Yeah, on. and I think that's the, I think the crux of that is the answer is no, because it doesn't spin up the actual meeting unless you were to start it ahead of time and get it, then you can upload stuff because what you end up getting is, and I want you to notice I have a room one and a room two chat. This is where you could actually upload files into these areas, but you'd have to start that ahead of time. Okay. And get the rooms open, close the, you know, that it, it literally spins it up after you actually create the rooms. And that's that's the caveat of it. You have to have the room first before you get that chat piece. 
Thank you. Okay. All right. That validated. So, Robbo, yeah. So, as an organizer, I create the host room. I create my breakouts. This is like the morning of. I go into each breakout room and and I got to like join it to like start it. Then it exists in Microsoft 365 online. Then I can go and prehydrate the chat, upload the files, begin doing things like I normally do before a meeting. Uh, But it doesn't really, there's no way to get to it as an object in Teams until you actually join the host meeting and then join the breakout. And that actually creates it, starts it. Exactly. Let's see, Brian asked about past Meeting Monday recordings. I think I've got them all linked to um, uh, ak.ms slash Meeting Monday. So just sitting out there on YouTube. Uh, Brian, let me know. um, It's nickst at Microsoft.com if you can't get to any. And I'll I'll point them to you here. I'll drop my email into the chat. Perfect. They should all be be up there. All right. right. Thanks, Walt. All right, with that, I think that's everything. I mean, that was a quick and <laughs> I want to say dirty, <laughs> but that's a quick run through about breakout rooms. And you can see breakout rooms, there's a lot to it. So I would have, highly suggest you play around with them, test them with some of your um, um, team and make sure you really understand it. Break it to understand it, as we always try to do. So thank you, guys. Yeah, we decided not to make a one pager for this topic because it's way more than what'll fit on a page. So that that help article here, I'll drop it in again. Uh, That's my best spot. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us on another Meeting Monday. It was great to see you. Uh, Next week's session is on hybrid meeting best practices. What to do, and I've got some people in the room and some people remote. Um, We are going to continue these through June, but we haven't published any topics yet. So we'll do a little huddle over Memorial Day and put them up there. So aka.ms slash Meeting Mondays for all the links, content, deck, and recordings. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Thank you.